Today I'm going to show you a number of projects that automators just like you have been working on as of late and so you're going to get a ton of good ideas but you're also just going to see some pretty incredible things. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to save you time in your life by giving you some just plain old good ideas for how to automate your life and then on top of that showing you some real world solutions to real world problems and this is from automators just like you or I and then I've got a couple of my own projects interlaced into this just things I'm working on and then on top of that I've got a couple of special features from some YouTube now first off is a really cool project. This is a serious undertaking that a gentleman named Nick I just found him actually on a Facebook group that I'll leave a link down below. If you're from Australia, this is probably the premier Google Home Facebook group to be a part of. Now this project from Nick, it's a beautiful garden and I'm just going to read a couple of the things that he was using. Not everything. Uh, there is an article on automatelife.net right now that you can go and read. I'll leave that link down below and you can see what he did and what he used to create something like this. It's over the top good, everything he did. So, you know, just to give you an idea, he had 20 metal supports, 52 sleepers, he had 400 kilograms of quickset concrete and then another 60 kilograms of path concrete. He's also using six tons of dirt to fill everything and he's using all the right garden materials and things like that, but he's also using seven Philips Hue pedestal lights. Now there's just some incredible work that he's done and what I really liked about this project, not only how it looked and the fact that he's using Hue lights which are going to be reliable in that situation for a very long time so he's not going to have to undo this for a very long time. Now that's really important when I think you're building something of this nature but the other things, I mean some of his construction techniques were absolutely immaculate and he was definitely trying to create something beautiful to stay there for a long time in his home. So now my project is not nearly as complex as Nick's, but I bet you it takes me almost as long because I'm actually in the middle of converting from a V2 SmartThings Hub to a V3 SmartThings Hub with all of my smart devices. And I'm learning a ton from this process that I'm going to share with you guys. But just up front, you have to unpair every Zigbee and Z-Wave device. There is no workaround. I've tried, I've tried, tried, tried. And you know what? Something else that's interesting is you can connect to two locations, a lot of those cloud services. So those really easily transferred across and then you have to recreate all your automation. So I'm kind of doing it uh, room by room or automation by automation in order to ensure a really seamless transition. Now, the other thing I'm doing while I do this is I'm actually moving some of the devices over to Hubitat. So this has become a real playtime is what I would call it with two smart home hubs and I'm really testing them out in which one is going to suit better locations and in better ways so that I can bring you some really interesting content here in the future. One of the most interesting projects that I've seen in a long time and this is by another YouTuber. His name is Chris. He's at HomeKit Geek and this project is simply put incredible and it's captured a number of other people's attentions as well. So you might have already seen this in an article or two and Chris's channel actually has showcased this a few times his Twitter feed is showcasing what he's doing and it's the life X tiles that he's actually gone out and brought some new life to these devices so what's really incredible is he's he's programming these to actually show things like uh, JPEG so he's taking picture files from people and then he's converting it through his programmatic process here and putting it on these life X tiles now this all started a little while ago I was watching what he was doing and he was creating a really great fire effect for these and that's how it started but if you want to see an incredible project a really in-depth project and he's posting lots of what he's doing online so that you can actually take some of this for yourself 
go follow Chris and look at this incredible lighting project. From one stunning project to another, and this is a different type of project, from Larry, who is always over on our community.automatelife.net board. So those are the forum boards that we maintain for automators to kind of talk through different automation things. And we built up a good little community there. I'm unfortunately not there as much as I'd like, but these guys are keeping things rolling with projects like this. Yes. And Larry has actually gone and created himself his own IoT device and the entire project cost was about $30. So when you consider that he's got a pretty good device. Now it did take him obviously some extra work but he's using something called ThingSpeak in order to connect what has essentially become a temperature, humidity and air quality sensor that he created for himself. So this is an absolutely amazing project. He's shared everything he's done over on our forum board so of course that link is down below as well. Now you guys know Tech with Brett. I'm sure lots of you follow him. I mean his channel is absolutely massive and that's because he does great things on his channel. Now he's actually through all of this he was just in the midst of moving uh, to a new uh, office for his work and things because he's actually switched to full time here and as he was doing that he decided to take on a couple of projects himself now he actually sent us a video and I love when I get stuff like this from Brett because it's always just fun to see him on the channel so check it out hey Brian since I've been in quarantine I've actually been busy getting my new office ready so right before all this happened I moved to a new place it looks pretty much the same but I had to get everything set up again. So one of the things I've been doing is making sure that Amazon's assistant knows all of my different devices. I haven't done a good job in organizing them there, so I organize them there, but I also bought a brand new, pretty nice light, and it's right here. Now the problem with nice lights is they actually aren't very smart, but thanks to you, I remembered that I have a SwitchBot, and now I can do this. Alexa. Turn on the SwitchBot. And there you, there you go. My light's now smart. Okay. So there you go. That is what I've been doing through quarantine. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy. From that to what is my second project. Now, this is going to be out as I release this video. And this is my second ebook. Now, what it is, is a recomposition of the Google Assistant versus Amazon Voice Assistant versus Apple Siri uh, video that we created. That video is over an hour long and this book is a recreation of that with some different components to it because it is a book and I just know that sometimes people don't want to sit watch an hour long video so I thought produce an ebook for that same topic and I think a lot of you are going to enjoy it. So that link is obviously down below. Alan who writes all of our articles at automatelife.net co-wrote this one with us so there's a lot more that has gone into this and a, and a lot better just than kind of my singular perspective here on the channel. I've also been wanting to take HomeKit uh, for a second spin and you know what I was working with Chris at HomeKit Geek again to kind of test out some of the stuff he had in his smart home. I've taken the Eve, uh, Eve uh, what do you call it, Eve Home uh, HomeKit app for a spin here and the other thing that I was actually doing was I started to get the IKEA Symphonisk bookshelf speaker set up with an Apple TV 4k I really want to put this through its paces and tell you guys what this is all about so that has been set up as what is a new home theater setup it's actually in our bedroom here so you know what it's kind of just fun to have but it's an interesting setup and I really want to be able to uh, make sure that my home kit is kept up to date or my knowledge on home kit is kept up to date but I'm getting a little side benefit here with the Symphonisk speakers and then yeah the TV 4k box is a lot of fun. My old friend Peter who if you guys never saw his smart home tour I mean he is as close to a perfect smart home as I have seen. Now his smart home tour I'll leave a link down below to that and actually he gave
gave us a real tour of his smart home over on Patreon. So if you want to see that, you do have to join our Patreon. That's actually at Peter's request that that video stays just on Patreon. So that's what we've done there. And, and honestly, his walkthrough, it would have sold me. So it's an incredible smart home, but he continues to find little ways to improve it. Now, he's gone and used a Philips, uh, Philip Hue light strip under a table, and he's done a ton of DIY work here, but it's not complicated stuff. So almost anyone could undertake this. Now, what I like about Peter is he really makes sure that things are long-term, they're gonna work for a, a long time, and they are pretty much perfect in terms of the installation. So he did just a few things, you know what? Yeah, he's just using double-sided tape to keep it up there, but he's also using a bit of drilling to keep the light strip there and then he actually has an extra space on his outlet that he's put or his power bar that he's put on the underside of this table and that would at some point if he wanted give him an opportunity to put something else under there maybe a second light strip if he wants to get really crazy and do some different effects but he's also cut a small hole in the carpet to make sure that the cable running is really clean and neat and not in the way so great installation from peter go check that out the link are down below again. A newfound friend in a guy named Matt Vey who's been sharing just a ton with me with Samsung Smart Things. You know what? He's actually undertaken quite an interesting project and he's putting it up on YouTube as he builds his skills here as a creator on YouTube. Now, he is actually creating custom smart apps through the IDE or the portal there that you can go to with Samsung Smart Things and he's showing how to do that on his YouTube channel. I think it's a a five part series that he's actually created and it will walk you stem to stern all the way through the process of creating your first smart app, actually implementing it and having it do something really functional within your smart home. So you could actually go and create your own and it's just worth it to understand the system and the code that's going on behind the scenes as well. So great stuff from Matt Vay. Now, speaking of smart things, the other project that I've undertaken, this is more a about the channel you know lots of these things that I'm taking on yeah they're about the channel but I got a smart things vision and it was Matt Bay who actually tuned me into the link that I could go and buy this at and get it sent to Canada so uh, it's an amazing project uh, product I think it's my favorite smart home camera and actually I think I just named the video that I do so still click the link still make sure you watch it when it says it's my favorite smart home camera reviewed um, but it's it's a privacy centric or privacy thought first smart home camera because it's not actually a video camera it's very different looking but it functions just like a smart home camera so no you wouldn't have the cover hooded uh, you know blurred out face of the person in your home but you would know that they are there once you connect it to the smart home monitor so I've been working a ton with that device trying to get it to do everything I want it to do and I've been pretty much successful at that so that's a lot of fun to work with and you will see it come onto the channel now my friend Pete Walker and this was interesting because he kind of said to me well I don't know if this project's interesting enough but he's solving a real world problem with what he's doing and I think a lot of you have high moisture levels or high humidity levels in your basements. You know what, when you have that situation, you want to dehumidify your basement. And while it's not really complicated stuff that he's using, TP-Link and SwitchBot and He's basically connecting those items into Samsung Smart Things and creating automation to dehumidify his basement. It's a really powerful idea, right? So lots of people could use this and I think it would be a very important thing for a lot of people to do. Now he's using those little meters and, and I think this is one of the best devices that I've used around my smart home as well because they provide temperature and humidity so you can dual purpose them and they're connecting to switch bots so you can use their little switch bot bots to press buttons on the devices like dehumidifiers or humidifiers that you don't necessarily have buttons for but in his case he was smart enough to buy something that just turned on with a smart plug and the other thing he was really smart about was that he's actually got 
something pointed to tell him when the light on his de dehumidifier says the, the system is basically full or the water tank is basically full and they need to go empty that. So lots of great thought in what he's doing there and I wouldn't expect any less than that out of Pete. So there you have it guys, a ton of really interesting projects are going on in the world of smart homes and if you have a great project going on, go ahead and leave that down below. And the other thing I wanna tell you about is if you want to bring that smart home project to automate your life I still have a couple of spots open for smart home tours that we are going to do I have a few people signed up but we are going to hit those smart home tours again here guys because a lot of you really loved seeing what other automators do so you can leave that comment down below or you can reach out to us through the emails on our about page otherwise make sure you subscribe to automate your life and we'll save you some more time in your smart home. So thanks for watching everyone, and of course, don't hate, automate.